Blessed be the one holy and living God. Glory to God forever and ever. Almighty God, to your hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We'll say together Canticle 13, which is printed in our bulletins. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise. Glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, Glory to you. Glory to you, seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you, beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven. Glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins, and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaimed to you unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you, as of first importance, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is within me. Whether it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Please respond in italics, please. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. All the kings of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. (coughs) 
Though the Lord be high, he cares for the lowly. He perceives the haughty from afar. The Lord will make good his purpose for me. O Lord, your love endures forever. Do not abandon the work of your hands. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Luke. Lord, you, Lord Once while Jesus was standing beside the lake of Gennesaret and the crowd was pressing in on him to hear the word of God, he saw two boats there at the shore of the lake. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon and asked him to put out a little way from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds There's more from the boat. <laughs> when he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down your nets for a catch. Simon answered him, Master, we have worked all night long, but have caught nothing. Yet, if you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done this, they caught so many fish that the nets were beginning to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so that they began to sink. But when Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees, saying, Go away from me, Lord, for I am a sinful man. For he and all who were with him were amazed at the catch of fish that they had taken, and so also were 
James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. Then Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will be catching people. When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord, grant us weak eyes for things of little worth, and eyes clear-sighted in all of your truth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. In the month of February, our focus on our parish value shifts to our value around children and youth. And so I'd like to invite you to take up your bulletins briefly and turn to the second page and you will find our mission, vision and values. And as we have in previous times, I'm going to ask uh, you to respond to the question about value by providing the appropriate value for this month, which is the children and youth. How do we value children and youth? A community that nurtures and engages. Over the last couple of decades or so, there has been a significant shift taking place in our understanding of what it means to be a community that both provides nurture and engages both our children and youth, but of course, whole families. And one of the big shifts that has been taking place is one that prioritizes belonging. Belonging. A belonging that comes before believing rather than the other way around. For as long as there has been instruction in the life of the church and as long as there has existed something that looks like Sunday school or worship, the idea had been that first instruction and believing preceded everything else. We provided the beliefs and confessions of the church as fundamental, laid those out in hopefully age-appropriate ways. And after that, we kind of hoped and prayed the kids stuck around. There is an old joke, which I'll just get to the punchline because I'm terrible at telling jokes, but a number of ministers got together. You've probably heard this story. And this church had a problem with bats. And the idea was, how, to, how do we get rid of the bats? And the punchline is, comes from the Episcopal priest gathered who says, you just confirm them and they'll never come back. <laughs> yeah. So this shift from a sense of first kind of imbibing the kids, imbuing the kids first with knowledge and then hopefully they will become part of the community that we call the church has gone through a very big reverse. And now you're more likely to hear the language of belonging as being primary to how we create that nurturing and engaging community for our youth, for our children, for our families. And I think there are some elements in our reading from St. Luke this morning which, which provide us some insight into what that belonging looks like in the context of the church, in the context, indeed, of a community gathered to confess our faith and trust in God. Think about two of the images from our reading today. The first image is that of 
Simon and the other fishermen casting out their nets. Jesus has asked them to cast their nets on the other side of the boat after a very unsuccessful all-night fishing expedition. I want you to imagine that image. Imagine the fishermen tired, perhaps frustrated. Imagine them wondering either aloud or perhaps in just their own hearts what it what it would mean to follow this potential stranger in doing the very thing that they know better than anybody. And the story, of course, is a wonderful one. The fishermen cast the nets to the other side and they catch more fish than one boat can manage. And before we get to the punchline of Jesus' invitation, the whole becoming fishers or fishermen or catchers of people, it is worth just pausing before that image, that image of the abundant net, to think about how it provides at least one way first of thinking about belonging. And I want to suggest that the first thing about Belonging is that it takes place often where we are. With the people gathered, under the conditions that we are gathered, and not, as it were, some other place, not in some fantasy where everything is perfect in our minds, a community that has everything that we expect or want a church that is meeting every possible expectation. No, the abundance happens at the place where the disciples are already located. Jesus doesn't send them to another sea with a different boat using advanced technology net or fish finding. (laughs) Jesus simply tells them to cast the nets on the other side right where they are. And they find abundance. They find something that perhaps in their imagination, perhaps even in their own training, they would never have imagined. But what they sought and what they needed was right there. So it might be a bit of a stretch. But I would like to suggest to us that when we think about what it means to create that nurturing and engaging community. When we think about what it means to create a place where belonging is happening, I think the first thing to keep in mind for us is that it happens where we are. And that God uses who we are and where we are and who is gathered with us to be the very site where belonging takes place. And the second image is that one of Simon, soon to become Peter, but Simon pleading before Jesus that he is unworthy, that his sins, the way in which he has ordered and organized and oriented his life is away from the ways of God and that the abundance that has just been produced brings all of his inadequacies into focus. Perhaps he wondered, do I even know how to fish? Do I have any concept of all this training that perhaps has been handed down for generations? And rather than Jesus saying, well, actually, yeah, you're completely wrong. I know way more. I've read a few more books. I've got this great idea about reinventing fishing. No, he simply reorients and, as it were, renews the very vocation that Simon and the rest already had. He didn't ask them to become astrobiologists, and only then will he understand the marvelous nature of creation. No, he reorients them from being fishers of fish, certainly a worthy vocation, but one that is oriented to, well, the consumption and death of the fish, if we need to be honest, 
It's not for the fish's good that they're caught. What benefit do they get? He reorients that fishing instinct, that fishing desire towards the fishing of people, which is for the benefit of others, in service to others. And there is, I think, in there a second lesson about belonging. Belonging, then, is not just about all us getting cozy and being familiar with one another, although comfort and familiarity, of course, is part of what it means to belong to a community. But that is not the end or the goal or the total purpose of belonging. Those instincts we have to be with one another, the hospitality, the genuine sense of compassion, the desire to be in each other's presence, whether physically or digitally, all of those instincts are channeled by Jesus into the service of those who are not here. For the good of those who do not yet belong, or may never belong. Jesus doesn't simply equip the disciples, whether past or present disciples, for the benefit of just getting together in order to be together. No, Jesus equips and charges and provides a new and renewed vocation that our belonging is not just for our benefit. It is for the benefit of those outside of our community, whatever that might look like. This way of thinking about belonging, taking these two images from our reading today, speaks both to the beauty and mystery of God to work with us where we are, and as I said, in terms of who we are, just as Jesus called Saul to be Paul, and as we heard in that letter from Corinthians, Paul wondering aloud how it is that this could it all be possible? After, what, after all, he was a persecutor of the church. He was zealous for God, and that was oriented to persecution. And now, as one who has been called by God and renewed in that vocation, that same zealous passion was oriented to the good of the church, the growth, the spread of the good news. And so it is with our story today and its invitation for us to think of what it means to be a community that gives primacy to belonging, to develop those skills and patterns of nurturing and engaging, particularly with our children and youth who can often be the other when it comes to the life of the church. We don't always like to admit that. But how often is that what eventually happens? Worship and formation is structured for adults and the kids are kind of ushered off to other things. And often that is appropriate because of the age appropriateness of what we engage. But, but if we truly are to be a community that not only acknowledges, but welcomes. That not only seeks to be hospitable, but seeks to create belonging. Then we are indeed charged, we are indeed given the same vocation that Jesus gave the fishermen, that we are to become fishers of people, those whose lives are shaped by providing the possibility of belonging for others. And that includes our children and our youth and our families. For no matter how much direction or teaching, no matter how much instruction we might pour into our lives of those gathered with us, particularly the youngest, it would seem it would seem that to provide belonging 
asks something different of us. To be a community that does truly seek to be nurturing and engaging asks of us those two things represented by those two, Im two images from our story. First, to look around and pay attention to who is here, to what's going on, to what we bring to the table in terms of our gifts, what we bring to the table in terms of our challenges, and to start being open, open to the surprising ways in which God can bring about abundance where we are, who we are, and then to channel that surprise revelation, to channel that abundant life that we find in order to serve those who are not yet part of it, to reach out to be a source of life for others, to be those fishes of people for their benefit as we seek and strive to live out the good news that has been revealed to us in the person of Jesus. So this month, but not just this month, but let's just start with this month. As we consider our desire to be a nurturing and engaging community, the call from Jesus seems to be this, that we pay renewed attention to who is here, both in physical and digital ways. Paying attention to where God is showing up, particularly in the lives of the youngest among us. And then paying attention to the vocation that we all have to be that source of life, that source of nurture and engagement. And these ways of paying attention and being attentive are, I think, how a community really does foster belonging. How we widen the circle of our community to include not only those that we know and are familiar with, but those that we're not aren't. Because, because this is the way that God's kingdom operates. God is in the business of widening the circles of belonging, drawing and calling and gathering peoples from the nations, peoples who look like us and peoples who don't. People who believe like us and people who believe different things. People who vote our way and people who don't. Widening the circles, not just for our sake, but for theirs. Widening the circles so that we truly can say, not only do we strive to be nurturing, but we are nurturing. For God is in the business of creating communities of belonging. And as we learn to respond to God and learn to be attentive to one another, what God promises us, promises us, is that we will experience an abundance of life. We will experience the grace of healing. We will experience God anew as we rediscover God in one another. Amen. Now, our creed was dropped from our bulletin this morning, so I'm going to invite you, I'm going to wander down here in just a second, I invite you to take up your prayer books and turn to page 358, page 358. And before the prayers begin, we will say the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, 
God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world. The Prayers of the People. Please participate after each prayer and the phrase, Lord in your mercy, by reciting the response, hear our prayer. Let us pray to God who is made manifest in Jesus Christ. As the prophet Isaiah rang out, arise, shine, for your light has come. Empower your church, O God, to ring out the good news of the light of your Son, Jesus, which pierces even the deepest darkness. Lord, in your mercy, as John the Baptist guided throngs of people to the edge of the wilderness and baptized Jesus in the River Jordan, we pray that you would guide our country and our leaders to the ways of justice and righteousness. Lord, in your mercy, as Jesus climbed the mountaintop and proclaimed a message of hope and healing, we pray for the sick and distressed and for the families, first responders and workers impacted by the recent fires, especially and for all those wonderful, lovable families that lost their homes and possessions in the horrific Marshall Fire, may they be comforted and consoled and recover quickly from their devastating loss. Lord, in your mercy. We are mindful of the days, weeks, and months ahead for seasons of recovery and rebuilding of homes, farms, lives, and communities. We pray for strength, courage, patience, and hope as grieving continues, as frustrations rise, and inevitable change occurs. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, too, knowing that we are entering a harsher climate, less predictable and more volatile. As we care for each other, Help us to care for your creation, to be worthy stewards and advocates of all which you have made. Lord, in your mercy, as your Son came to proclaim the forgiveness of sins and the gift of life eternal, give to the departed eternal rest and let light perpetual shine on them. We pray especially for and all those loved ones who have died from COVID-19 and all those loved ones in the military and first responders who gave their lives to keep all of us safe. And in addition, comfort all those in our parish who grieve. Lord, in your mercy, 
Hear our prayer. Eternal God, we thank you for your presence and grace. You are our creator, our light in the darkness, our hope and our salvation. Equip us to be a beacon of love in a time of so much fear and confusion. In the name of Jesus, the light of the world. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you in our heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because in the mystery of the word made flesh, you have caused a new light to shine in our hearts, to give the knowledge of your glory in the face of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Saviour and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. And the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he'd given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he'd given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins whenever you drink it. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death. We proclaim his resurrection. We await his coming in glory. And we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray, you gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with Mary, the God-bearer, and all your saints, we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. And now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, the holy things for the holy ones.
Turning to page 10, page 10 in our bulletins, let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and cup of salvation, and you have united us with Christ and one another, and you have made us one, though your people in heaven and on earth. Now send us forth in the power of your Spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. May Christ the Son of God be manifest in you, that your lives may be a light to the world. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Please be seated. Very good morning to each and every one of you, those gathered here in person in the nave and those joining us in the digital spaces of Zoom. A special greeting to all of you and it is a delight indeed to be gathered with you as we are gathered by God to offer up words of praise and thanksgiving and to share with one another the many gifts that we have been given by God, the gifts of friendship and compassion and even of forgiveness and reconciliation. It is good to be with you all. Special thanks to those who were able to join us last Sunday for our annual meeting. We held it online last last week and, and we had a really fabulous Um, turnout. So thank you for those who are joining us for that. And a special congratulations to Gina Shedd and Jen Strea, who were voted on unanimously as our new Vestry members. And we will have a commissioning of Gina and Jen next Sunday. So I hope you can join us for that. A couple of things coming up in our life together this week that I I want to highlight. The, The first is actually a postponement. We had hoped to have our Um, A gathering this afternoon on the topic of global to local impacts committing to actions on creation care and climate change with Danny Danny Broberg of the Bipartisan Policy Center in DC. Uh, Unfortunately, we have to postpone that just so stay tuned for a rescheduled date. But two things this week that we are doing and I do hope you are able to participate in, they're both on Tuesday. The first is Tuesday morning, the adult Bible study are beginning a new series looking at what's often called Second Isaiah, which is the chapters in the prophet Isaiah, chapters 40 through 55, as I said, often referred to as Second Isaiah. It is a text, that grouping of chapters, which has a lot of resonance, particularly at the time of Christmas and as we move into Lent and Easter. So a lot of resonance for those of us who read it with Christian eyes. But there is, of course, a great deal going on in those chapters and in the book itself. And so I do encourage you, if you haven't yet agreed or put it on your calendar, sign up for that Tuesday beginning February 8th at 10 a.m. Anne Cairns can give you more information, and her contact information is in the bulletin. Also that day, we are having a free recital series of African-American composers at beginning at noon. So go to Bible study, then come here and be part of this recital series. There is information about it in the bulletin as well. I hope you can join us for that this coming Tuesday at noon. As we continue to find ways as a community to support those impacted by the Marshall fires, both the families, those whose livelihoods are impacted by, and the first responders and all those involved in restoration and other various kinds of help wanted to be sure that you were aware of our participation as a parish in the volunteer organizations active in disaster, VOAD for short. And we have joined part of 
Broomfield's VOED, VOED is a national program. Boulder has a VOED program as well. And it provides us training and preparation and then mobilization in times like this. There's more information about getting involved in VOED in the bulletin. And all of these announcements are being sent out in the e-news each week. And if you aren't receiving the e-news and you'd like to do so, please contact Melinda in the office and we'll be sure to add you to the list. Again, lovely to see you all and lovely to be gathered here as God's people. Let us now stand and we'll sing our concluding hymn. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.